I pressed the zero coupon bond with the whole white model in Python. And uh, in this video, I want to show you my implementation and uh, share with you some of the, my observations. In my previous video, I showed you the what's the check model. And uh, let's review what's the check model. There are three parameters in the what's the check model. One is A, the speed of the reversion to the mean. And B is long-term level of the mean. And uh, sigma is the volatility at time t. All those three parameters are constant in what's the check model. And the whole white one factor model, I got the formula in this book written by Zhang Hao. And uh, there are several assumptions in this model. First, the speed of the reversion is constant, and the volatility is constant. This is the same with the uh, Wasichek model. And in this whole white model, it says the reversion level is time dependent. This is different from Wasichek model because in the Varsity Check model, the reversion level is constant. And in this model, the parameter theta t is chosen to make the model consistent with the initial term structure. I will show you what is this uh, theta t in the next slide. This is just a picture from the book. And this is interest rate change and is determined by this formula. And in this formula, this A is the speed of the reversion. And uh, I want to clarify that this A is different from my previous video in the Vasichik model. Basically, this is a ripper cycle of A in the bus check model. And the theta t is defined in this formula. As you can see, it's here. And this theta t basically is determined by the initial term structure of the interest rate. When we try to price a bond, the formula is as follows. Basically, is defined in this formula, and it has A and B. And B is defined in this formula, and in A, it also refers to B. Now I'll show you where I got all those input data. For the federal funding rates, I got from this website. And for the yield curve data, I got from this website. I got the yield curve data from this website as of April 18th. Then I input the data in a spreadsheet. This is one month, this is two months, this is three months, and six months. I just convert them to unit year. And this is the date as of April 18th, 2019. For the federal funding rates, I got the data from this website, and I download them and put in my spreadsheet. I downloaded one year federal funding rate. And you can see as of April 18th, the funding rate was 2.43%. And for the last one year, 
I calculated the standard deviation for the daily changes. This I will use as the volatility for the calculation. Now let's see the implementation. First, I use Python to read this treasury yield file. And then I put some parameters here. At the beginning, I put the speed of reversion as 10 and volatility as 0 0.1. And the initial interest rate, I put 3%. Now let's run the program. Let's check the result. This yield curve was generated with the initial input of the current term structure. Basically, the line just uh, connect all the data points. And next one, I add spline to them to make the curve smoother. Then based on the initial term structure, I calculated uh, zero coupon prices. Then I calculate the log of the discount factor. This is without spline, this is with spline. And then I draw two forward rates with this blue line is the raw data. The orange line is I took the log of the yield first and then I calculated forward rate. And then we calculated theta and the theta times A give us long-term level of the mean. You can see because the initial yield curve, it goes up and came down. Although it didn't hit zero here, but the trend seems like it's going to hit zero. And then after we calculated long-term level of the mean because this trend you can see the level of the mean go cross zero it went to the negative territory and then it came back and then keep going until it's between 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 And here I draw the forecast interest rate with whole white model at this blue line. And then this orange line is long-term mean of the interest rate. If we draw the interest rate curve in this orange line, we can see the initial term structure is displayed with these blue dots. Finally, we can check the bounce price we calculated with this whole white model as shown in this yellow line comparing with this blue dot which was implied by the initial term structure. You can see the bond price calculated by the whole white model somehow is lower than the initial price implied by this term structure. And then I went back to this parameter and we check this speed of reversion and volatility and also 
the spot interest rate. If we open the file, which I used in my previous video, we can get the reversion speed from this VASI check model estimated by the historical data. In the previous video, we calculated the mean reversion speed here. As I mentioned at the beginning, the mean reversion speed in this video is the replicable of the previous videos A. So if we calculate the reciprocal of this mean reversion speed, we got 3.014952. If we check the funding rate as of April 18th, the data is 2.43. And the volatility is about 2%, as I mentioned before. Now let's go back to the Python program. Now if we put the speed of reversion with the number we estimated with the Vasicek model, and we run the calculation, You can see now the bond price is very close to the price we estimate with the initial term structure. And also you can see the forecasted interest rate shows reversion pattern like this. Now, if we put volatility with the number we calculated with the historical data, rerun the program, you can see the forecast interest rate with whole white model changed a lot and also the mean level of interest rate also changed. Now let's change this spot interest rate to the actual historical data. Let's rerun this calculation. You can see now the bond price estimated by the whole white model match exactly the price calculated by the current term structure. And also you can see the forecasted interest rate with whole white model changed because we changed the initial spot interest rate. Let's do something extreme, see what will happen. For example, if we put speed of reversion at 100 and we rerun the program, you can see the bond pricing didn't change much. But you can see the forecasted interest rates change a lot. If we put it back at 3, and then we change the volatility. If we say the volatility is 1, we recalculate the program. You can also see the bond price didn't change much, but the interest rate changed a lot. And the long-term level of mean changed a lot.
Let's put this back. Now let's change the initial interest rate. If we change the spot interest rate to 0 0.1 and rerun the program, you can see the bond price changed a lot. And also the forecasted interest rate curve changed a lot. And also along with this long-term level of mean changed a lot. Now let me summarize my observations. Reversion speed will affect long-term level of interest rate, but not pricing. Volatility also will affect long-term level of interest rate, but not pricing. But initial interest rate will affect both long-term level of interest rate and pricing dramatically. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is the implementation of a whole white one-factor model. In this model, although the reversion level of interest rate can change over time, the volatility is constant. Also, the parameter theta is determined by the initial term structure. This is the limitation of a whole white one-factor model. In the whole white two-factor models, both the volatility and the term structure can be changed over time. This is how I price zero coupon bond with whole white one-factor model in Python. Please provide your comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.